Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on EMC consideration. Our topic for today's discussion is on far field radiation. Under far field radiation, we can have either differential or common mode radiation. So this video, we are going to concentrate on differential mode radiation. This will be the part 17 series discussion on EMC. The earlier on series discussion, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you are keen to know more about EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by subscribe and also like. Thank you so much, Guy. This is a diagram which I have shown it to you. Okay, we have discussed extensively on the E view and the H view under the near view. So our objective for today is we are going to discuss about far field coupling. Under far field coupling, there can be either differential or common mode radiation. And again, today we are going to concentrate on differential mode radiation. This is a diagram to explain to you the difference between differential mode and common mode radiation. So on your left is a differential mode radiation. The only key difference is the magnitude is the same, but the phase is 180 degree different. So this is the equation for differential mode radiation. As for common mode, both the magnitude and the phase are the same. The effect of the total common mode Radiation is basically a summation of common mode of two and one together. Okay, so maybe I will make another video to describe the key difference between differential mode and common mode. Other differential mode, okay, they can be modeled as occurring from a small loop antenna. So you can see that there is actually a current flow in a loop. So this potentially form a small loop antenna and basically emission actually occur. Okay, for a small loop of current A, carry the current I, and the magnitude of electric field measure in free space at a distant R okay, can be expressed in this equation. When there's a current flow in a closed loop, okay, they both potentially release a emission. How much is the radiate emission can actually be calculated by using this formula here. Okay, for a small loop, Okay, where the parameters is less than a quarter wavelength, okay, the current is, the loop is all in phase. Okay, but for large loop, the current is not all in phase. Therefore, they may subtract rather than add to the overall emission. Okay, for a large loop here, okay, the current may not be all in phase. The key difference is basically they may subtract. Okay, they may minimize the radiant emission. By right, we should not have a large loop. Okay, we want to make it as small as possible so that our emission actually will be reduced. Okay, we, we don't really want to purposely to design large loop in order to have the cancellation effect. Okay, because when we actually increase the loop, you can see from here, the area actually increase. Okay, the radiate emission or the differential mode radiation also increase, hence it's not desired. Okay, keep this in mind, we are not trying to design a large loop here. Okay, for differential mode radiation occurring over a ground plane, okay, the emission is double because of reflection from the ground plane. Okay, remember when we do a RE measurement, okay, in a chamber, there will be a ground plane. And because of the ground plane, okay, the emission actually double. So this is a final equation to calculate the differential mode radiation in far field. Okay, so what we do is basically the earlier on this equation, we just multiply this term by two. And finally, this is what we achieve. Okay, so the E okay, is in terms of V volts per meter. Frequency is in terms of Hertz, area in meter square. I, which is the current in ampere. And the R, which is the distance of observation or the distance when we measure, which is in meter. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay, for example, one, okay, calculate the electric field strength in microvolt per meter and dB microvolt per meter measured at 3 meter of a 
30 megahertz, 25 mini ampere current flowing around a 10 centimeter square loop. Okay, this is the equation that I showed it to you earlier on. Okay, so we just need to substitute the parameters in. Okay, so this part is here. So the F, which is the frequency, which is 30 meg. So this is where the frequency is. Next will be the area. Okay, given to us is 10 centimeter squared. We need to convert into meter squared. So this is how we get the meter squared. Okay, next will be the current. Okay, the current given to us is 25 mini ampere. That's how we get this 25 mini ampere over here. The R is basically the distance that we measure or observe, which is three. And that's how we get this three. So we punch the calculator. We should get this 197.25 microvolt per meter. Okay, again, on the question, we are told to express in terms of dB microvolt per meter. Okay, so this is a voltage. So what we need to do is we do a 20 log of this 197.25, okay, which we can achieve of 46 dB microvolt per meter. Okay, so what can we conclude here? Okay, this level okay, is almost twice the allowed FCC class B limit of 100 volt per meter. Okay, you can see that this number okay, is almost twice the amount at three meter place. Okay, normally we would like to know how big is the loop area we can actually afford to have so that we can actually comply to a certain standard. For this case, it's a FCC class B standard. Okay, so let's do another example here. So this is the radiate emission of differential mode radiation. So this is the equation that I shared with you earlier on. Under FCC class B, okay, this radiate is about 100 foot per meter. How, what we need to do is basically we move the area onto the left. Okay, so what we left is, okay, the E multiplied by R, which is here. Okay, below is basically 263, multiplied by F squared, multiplied by the current here. So the E term, I know is 100 volt per meter, divided by this 263 times 10 to the power minus 16. Okay, I actually get this number here. Okay, so I multiply by the ER frequency in terms of megahertz squared and I in terms of mini ampere. So I actually can compute here. We show it to me that the area must be less than five centimeter squared in order to comply to this FCC class B limit. So in short, how can we actually reduce differential mode radiation? Okay, there are three ways. One is to reduce the magnitude of current. So you take a look on this equation here. If we reduce the current, we actually reduce the differential mode radiation. Second, we can reduce the frequency. Okay, again, from here, you can see that when we reduce the frequency, the differential mode radiation also reduce. Last but not least, we can reduce the loop area. Okay, when we reduce the loop area, the A reduce which also caused the differential mode radiation to reduce. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.